Hey everyone, Buzz Burline with Kingfisher Kayak Adventures and Team New Canoe. Welcome back to the channel. I am here after a tournament unloading my truck and I participated this weekend at the Florida Bass Nations Northwest Division tournament at uh, Lake Talquin, which is a lake I have only been at two times in my life and I had an interesting experience and part of my channel is to not only give you tips and tricks for kayak fishing, but also to share my adventures with you. So it was a great adventure and I want to show you how I caught some fish and what I caught it on and what was successful and maybe some things that you shouldn't do too. So thanks for being here and stay tuned. tell you more about this tournament that I was in I'm, I'm here in my driveway uh, at the house and so there's a lot of background noise from animals and neighbors and dogs and so forth so just enjoy it have fun this great kayak experience I had in the Northwest Division of the Florida Bass Nation kayak series it was on Lake Talquin and it was a very challenging event I finished in seventh place out of 16 people I did catch a limit, but this was a lake that was really outside my comfort zone for a Florida lake. It uh, doesn't have as much vegetation as some of the, the wetland bowls that I'm used to fishing in. And uh, it's more like a Georgia lake where it has deep water uh, river that runs through this lake. Um, it has, it was, the water was very dirty like chocolate milk, doesn't have as much vegetation, steep uh, sides to the banks and um, it was quite an experience so I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone uh, and fish other areas to improve my uh, angling experience and improve my skill set so I thought I would tell you that I went fishing for eight hours and I had six bites all day um, I was fortunate to uh, fish pretty cleanly and catch all six fish that bit my line only a couple other anglers got full limits and i have some caveats to my limit and then some something i'll tell you not to do with some of your equipment so let's get started with what works so my first bite of the morning um, i was fishing in a, in an inlet area off the main river and the water my goal was to find water that was um, not as dirty and I thought if I could find some cleaner water uh, it might be easier to catch some fish that were biting and my first lure that I caught fish on was of course a staple in Florida uh, is a bladed jig this is the jackhammer half ounce green pumpkin uh, shad color and I used a gambler lures ghost shad color and this is their Komodo you know, as a trailer. I think I got bit within the first half hour, one bite, and it was a uh, probably a two pound fish or it's like 16 and a half inches. And boy, I thought the day was gonna go really well. Then I went a long time uh, without catching any fish. Just by noon, I was still only had one fish on the board and uh, I looked at the standings and a lot of other people were struggling as well. So I thought if I could just get a limit, that would help me finish higher. And that was, that was definitely the case. There were only two people got a limit and they finished in one and two. Third place had four fish. Now I told you I caught a limit, but three of the fish that I did catch were just under 12 inches. So only two of my fish counted towards uh, the scorable uh, bass. But for a very challenging lake for me, I still felt pretty good because I didn't get a chance to pre-fish and I really hadn't been to this area before. So after that first fish, I moved up into a stream uh, as far as I could where the water was cleaner, but it's still very shallow. And I caught my next fish on the Yamamoto, Gary Yamamoto Custom Baits uh, Green Pumpkin Cinco and I caught that on my St. Croix rods Mojo Bass which is normally a topwater rod that I use 
and I used the Quantum Smoke S3 reel, an 8 1 to 1. Now, the reason I had to use this rod and reel setup with a 30 pound braid, I actually had um, fluorocarbon, cigar fluorocarbon, 15 pound fluorocarbon with it. Uh, the reason I had to, as a leader, but the reason I had to use that is because. The spinning rod that I really like to use for wacky rigs is my Victory Rod 7.3 medium power, extra, um, extra fast action. I broke it. And my lesson as to what not to do uh, as a distracting experience was don't break your rods. Now, how I did that is I was fishing a fluke and I got a wind knot and in a rush to try to take the knot out I held the rod too close to the tip and snapped it off so normally I do use a spinning rod for my wacky rig setup uh, either the 7.3 or sometimes a 6.8 if I'm trying to skip under docks quite a bit but you have to be adaptable and so I was able to use uh, my topwater uh, rig because top water really wasn't biting that well in order for it to work all right so my next bite so i caught two two small fish on the uh on the wacky rig and as i said before we uh, caught my larger fish so far on the jackhammer well next i was moving out into more dirty water i figured i'd give it a try with some um different baits and I rarely fish a spinner bait with Colorado blades but in this case I used a Picasso half ounce spinner bait with both the gold and the silver blades Colorado blades and I did that more in a ghost shad color and I was trying to use um, a zoom trailer the kind of the see them on spinnerbait trailers all the time where they have two tails on that i really wasn't getting bitten i haven't had good success on that so i remembered that uh, a swim bait tail sometimes has done better for me and i used the slayer uh, ink this is a, their sinister series and um, i usually use this with a bluegill color spinnerbait this is the sst xl and it's a four inch swim bait but i but i cut it down for this so if you can you can see it while it it doesn't have as long as a profile um it does have more body for the fish to uh grab a hold of it and i fished that on probably my favorite rod right now is the saint croix rods legend tournament this is their rip and chatter rod it is a 7-2 uh, moderate heavy fast action I use a Corrado DC uh, 150HG a reel with 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon on it. And that was the, what I also used for my chatterbait bite. So I was able to get a bite in the thick and dirty stuff. And it was just inside some pads. And that was also a small fish. So, so now I'm... I've caught four bass. I actually, on, on the wacky rig earlier, I caught a little warmouth as well, but um, still struggling here late in the day. Now, this is, now we're approaching uh, lines out, which is at three o'clock. And I'm really moving, uh, trying to get to deeper water islands, find that fresh water where it's not quite as dirty. And what I was fishing to catch my last fish, which was my largest fish of the day, a bitterbait Senko uh, rigged up uh, Texas style with a Titan tungsten 1 8 worm weight and a uh, hybrid worm hook. And man, it was exciting. With one minute left, I didn't have time to check my watch. And it was kind of a flurry of action. And then if you read my Facebook post, if you're a friend of mine, you'll know that I was able to get the fish in the boat and get its picture on the measuring board properly 
with just 13 seconds left before lines out. And I was able to do that, fortunately, because of my St. Croix rods. My second favorite rod right now is the Marshall. This is the one that I caught my PB bass on at 12 pounds, 15 ounces here in North Central Florida. And it is a 7.3 medium heavy power, uh, fast action rod. I have the uh, Lose Reel, which is the Tournament Pro, and it's a 7.5 to one. I use 40 pound braid and I have a leader that's actually mono. I'll use about uh, 12 to 24 inches of big game mono, 20 pound mono for that extra stretch. And uh, fortunately didn't lose the fish and had uh, a really good time, uh, especially right there at the end. So point here is that you just got to keep fishing till the end. It can really make or break your day, even with 13 seconds left. And try to be careful with your equipment. And when things happen, you just kind of have to adapt. And I did that with using my Mojo Bass rod, my topwater rod. Uh, I probably wasn't quite as accurate with the wacky rig, but those things are going to happen in any tournament. There's going to be distractions and it was a great experience, even though I finished seventh and some people might say, well, you didn't get a limit. You didn't, you know, you didn't do so well. I should have left early. Um, I really enhanced my fishing skills, my mental skills out there on the water. And I'm hoping that you learned a little bit as well uh, by seeing what I use out there, knowing that it's okay to experiment and that you should put yourself out there in order to get better. So I encourage you to get in competition if that's what you wanna to do, to help drive yourself to get better. Hopefully this helps you and you can use some of these products when you are under similar situations. And I appreciate you being here. I know you can go to a lot of different channels uh, to check out different baits or, or styles or whatever. This is just how I did it. There's so many great companies out there that you can really challenge yourself with every product, with every new lake, and have fun at it. So at the end of the day, we had a great time. The Northwest Division of Florida Bass Nation runs a wonderful tournament, and it was so good to see all my friends there who I hadn't seen in a while. And I just wanna thank you for being here. And please, if this brought you some, some value, just give a thumbs up, tell some friends about it. If you want to know more about Florida fishing, you know, connect with me, ask questions, and I'll be happy to try to answer. I hope that you will get a chance to get outside, enjoy the outdoors, enjoy what God has created for us, and I look forward to seeing you out on the water.